So we're here at Killalone Old Church Ruin and Cemetery. Now the church um, is abandoned and it was built around 1825 to 1827. Now there's a very interesting crypt in here as well. And the last time we were here, the niches were empty in the crypt. So we're going back in here today on my channel to have a look to see if there's any changes being made, if it was blocked up or what's going on in the cemetery here. So let's go inside and have a tour around this beautiful old church. We had a look in there guys and we can't seem to see anything. It looks like that hole at the top of it there, the little hole is a, it's just a long shaft that goes in. Um, it's made of wood kind of, so it just it looks like it's darkness in there and you can't really pick up anything with the, the cam, the drain cam there. So guys, that's the old mausoleum there, and there's no inscription on it, but we won't know till we look at edit what we've actually found inside there, or what we see. If anything at if all. If anything is. at all is in there. The church is gorgeous. Just the rails. You can see the ruin of it there as well. That was probably the area where the... Wow, look at... So, so we have a flood in the old cemetery here, guys from the the river shore in Tipperary and it's sadly it's coming in very close to this grave now this is the only grave that's actually close to the the river but you can see just how close it is coming in there the flood so I hope we don't get any more rain in the area here because it would be sad to see these graves here getting flooded and i'll just read the grave while i'm here in loving memory of beatrix wife of 12th duke of saint albans born on the 25th of march 1877 and died the 5th of august 1953 and of osborne de vere 12th duke of Salabans, born the 16th of October 1874 and died in 1961 or 1964 at Holner Hall, Lancashire. So I will look up that information as well. Duke of St. Albans. And that's just the back of the church. And you can still see the beautiful design work 
architecture work on that window of the church and the back entrance there is covered in ivy and briars and stuff definitely my favorite rooms church yeah it is it's my favorite for sure a, it's a beautiful location and it's gothic style isn't gothic it? gothic style it's full of history so like just as that grave we were reading there the duke of saint albans so i'm sure there's a lot online about that so i will add it to the video if i can find anything but you can just see there when you look around how beautiful, how beautiful it is now we have another crypt over here with all the rails around it another grave here with this beautiful wrought iron railings going around it and chain patricia or patrick barnes 18 something at their age 78 also his daughters francis barnes and caroline his wife are buried in that big plot now this one here is a huge crypt as well and it says sacred to the memory of william a ryall r-i-a-l-l of Annerville, who departed this life on the 10th of November 1904, age 54. And here we have a loving memory of Maria, who died the 5th of November 1888, age 77 years old. And just at the top of the crypt, we have this beautiful stone design at the top monument here of the crypt and the setting of this cemetery i think it's one of the nicest it cemeteries for sure yeah i just it would have been it would definitely is in the top 10 oh, top five for me. or five maybe cemeteries that we've been to we have an old railing around this one here and unfortunately it's covered up um there's a couple of tombs in there tabletop tombs are covered over these are of Anor Castle, if I can remember. Right. Anor Castle, these people are, yeah. So we'll read a couple of these. Eliza Cliburn, wife of Charles E. Cliburn of Anor Park, Clonmel, who died the 4th of August, 1918, age 86 years old. And here we have Charles Edward Cliburn, of Anor Park Clan Mel, who died the 16th of April 1922, aged 75 years old. And uh, there's a lot of overgrowth here, you can see around the grave areas. So I'll try and make my way in to read these. Now, here we have Nicholas Herbert of Anor Castle, who died the 18th of February 1926 so these people were of Anor Castle I'm sure the nearby castle here we have Mildred Virtue Woodhouse dearly beloved nurse for 36 years in the service of Henry Mandeville of Anor Castle who died the 18th of December 1919. So Mildred here was a nurse for 36 years in the service of Henry, his private nurse. Gladys Elizabeth Manville, second daughter of Henry Ambrose of Anor Castle. She died the 21st of January and the year is covered with ivy there. Winifred Mary Owens, younger sister of Gladys and widow of Captain H.B. Owens, R.A.M.C., beloved artist in home and garden, born the 5th of April 1889 and died the 10th of June 1978. Look at that inscription. Beloved artist in home and garden. 
I just love those inscriptions where they actually give you a bit of, you know, what they did in their lives. And Reverend Morris Valentine Mandeville, born in 1903 and died in 1990, third son of Henry Ambrose of Anor Castle, one time canon of Accra Cathedral in Ghana. Look at that, guys. So he was a canon in the cathedral in Ghana, Accra. So that's the old crypt there, guys. And we'll make our way over that way now. Um, as I was saying, we've been here before. Serenity Sue has done a, a video here. And uh, it looks like it's still opened today. And uh, was the final resting place here of Sir Thomas Osborne, his widow and his daughter. And the bodies were moved from here, the coffins. And why they were moved, I don't know, or where they were moved. But you can just see. I'm not sure where these opened. Yeah, the slits in the windows here. Like you can actually, you can actually look in, and there you can see inside the niches. So we're going to go inside and have a closer look inside the old crypt here. And I'll take you back outside in and read some of those plaques and inscriptions on them. So this is inside the crypt, and you can see all those vines are coming down. inside the old crypt on the wall there. Wow, this is just amazing, guys, to see all this here. Inside a crypt. And you can see the roof there is kind of decaying away. Now those that you see there that are lit up with the sunlight through them, they're the actual plaques on the other side of the crypt. So we will go outside and read those. And uh, these are the niches inside the crypt. So these would have held the coffins here of Sir Thomas Osborne, his widow and his daughter. And as I was saying, they were removed from, why they were removed, I don't know. And there's no trace really of any remains left or anything like that there. I don't see anything in that crypt or that niche, I should say. Um, but it was in here. Serenity Sue found her rabbit. And it frightened me. <laughs> and it frightened her. And what a place to get a fright, guys, inside this old crypt. So as we can see here, this is another niche. So altogether, there's one, two, three, four, five, six or seven niches altogether. Now, from what I found online, it mentioned Sir Thomas Osborne, his wife and his daughter. Didn't say anything about anybody else, but I'm sure there was other people interred here, or maybe there was niches here and they were never used. And there was only three people buried here, so it's hard to know. There's old stones there. You can just see here, old bricks and stuff. Not sure they were here last time. You know what, they've been taken out of there, I swear. Now, um, you. now there is pieces of wood there, guys, and it could be a coffin, and it does look like that to me. Yes. Um, I'll just try and zoom in. And show you with the torch. Just there in front, you can see pieces of, like bits of ledge there as timber. Well. Almost looks like they're charred. And it does look like there was a fire in there. But I think that's the old wood when it gets damaged. So if you're wondering what it looks like inside of an old crypt and niches, that's exactly what it looks like. 
So we're very lucky that this is opened and we get to actually have a closer look inside here. Definitely old timber stuff. Some more pieces of wood there, guys. Could be from a coffin. I'm not oh, quite yeah, sure. Uh, actually, looks like there's bones or something. Oh, yeah. Up the top. Right. Well, there is bones up there, yeah. What? Like, I don't, I don't get this. I don't understand what... Like, if the happens. people were moved from here, why is there, um, just there. up there ahead, yeah? I'll try and zoom in as far as I can now, get the camera to focus. Yeah. But just there, guys, see that there? That looks like a bone to me. Definitely is. Definitely is. And pieces of um, timber there, like it could be. More bone, I think, over there to the left. What's left of the coffin? Strange, so unless it was vandalized, our yeah. grave robbers were in here, and they had to be moved, and that one got destroyed, and that's what's left. The whole roof is going to eventually fall down. Yeah, but it needs restoration here, guys. Yeah, Nice and uh, it's a beautiful crypt, as you can see. You go all the way around. But where did these bricks come out of? They weren't there before. I wonder where they're taken from. The middle's here. It looks like they were taken from there, those bricks here. Yeah. Was someone planning to take them? All these vines are just hanging down everywhere, guys. Look at that. It's crazy. You can see the roof there is caving in. So I'll bring you around and we'll read. The inscriptions on the, the other side. I was showing you inside the crypt there. The light was coming through the plaques. And I'll just explain to you what I was talking about. And that's these plaques just here. So you can actually see through those. The light is coming in through them. Through the other side of that. So it just says here, opposite this slab lies the body of Catherine Rebecca, widow of Sir Thomas. Osborne, Bart, at his home she loved and adorned Newtown, Anner. In the 60th year of her age, died on the 10th of October, 1856. And on this one here, the remains of Catherine Isabella, only daughter of the late Sir Thomas Osborne and wife of Ralph Osborne, Esquire. She was born in the 30, on the 30th of June, 1818, and died on the 21st of June, 1880. And then we have more plaques here. There's no inscription on this one, and there's no inscription on this one here either. So maybe that explains why, you know, it says online that Sir Thomas was buried here with his wife and daughter and there was no mention of anybody else. So maybe those crypts, um, you know, the niches in there were made for other family me members and they were never used. But interesting, to say the least. And uh, more history there, guys, of this beautiful place. And the old crypt, a mausoleum of the Osbournes. And I hope somebody does come along and repair all the damage that's been done to it there. Um, because there's no coffins or bodies in there anymore, I'd imagine myself guessing, you know, that they won't actually fix it up because there's no bodies in there anymore. Um, but a beautiful mausoleum and final resting place. And the connections there to Anor. The castle. So I'm going to continue on around and read a couple of more headstones. 
in the old beautiful church and cemetery here. And there's that beautiful crypt that we just came out of, the Osborne family. Unfortunately, there is flooding starting to um, come in around the old cemetery, as you can see there. But look at that for scenery. And what a place to be laid to rest with all those mountains, scenic views around. And the water's flowing really fast on the river there. And uh, all that divides it really is that wall. So I hope that wall doesn't break apart and water starts to come in around here. An old tomb here. John, son of William and Jane Jones of Glen Patrick, died July the 7th, 1831, aged only 12 months. So, a young child. Rest in peace, John. Now, there is another area in there, and it looks like it was part of an old building that was a giant to the church here. We have that old route iron railing inside here. Unfortunately we can't read that one. The inscription has gone off it. There's the church tower taken over by all that ivy. Yeah, it is getting very high there, I was just saying. And I hope it doesn't come in around the graves. So this, like, it looks like here, this was an old part of the church as well. And there is headstones in here, so. I'll have a quick look here. Here light the body of William Lanigan, who departed this life on the 20th of May, 1794, age 70 years old. And a beautiful angel design on this, like a cherub here, with the heart on it. Gorgeous designs on that. So I'm going to make my way back out around, guys. I'll read a couple of more headstones. Wow, just look at that with the sun and the hillside there in the back, the cemetery and beautiful. And I hope that water does not come in to the grave area. Here light the body of John Harney who departed this life the 26th of August, 1801, in the 22nd year of his age. Rest in peace, John. And this is the Harney family. James was born in 1816 and died in 1883. His wife, Margaret, born in 1819, died in 1888. Their ancestors and descendants and all their names are on that inscription as well there. So we have a beautiful grave here with um, Jesus on it. I will be done. Erected by Edward Kennedy in memory of his mother, Helena Kennedy, who died the 28th of April 1953. His sister Kitty, 
died the 17th of August 1949 and his brother Patrick died in 1972. His father Patrick is there, died in 1974. And his grandson Martin, and in brackets it says stillborn, son of Kieran and Carl, June 1983. Beautiful headstone. So I'm just going to show you an example, guys, of um, the flood damage here in the cemetery. We have this grave, and you can just see how close the water is coming in towards this grave here. And it's the final resting place of Ellen Power Whelan. She died in 1817. Thomas Power, 1919. So that's the Power family grave. And uh, it is extremely close, that flood, to the grave there. So guys, that's the old church and cemetery here in Killalone. And uh, I was just speaking to some locals there and they were telling me that the hedge here actually divides. The far side of that hedge is President Burials and this side where I'm standing at the moment is Catholic. So the hedge divides the cemetery um, from President and Catholic. And the crypt over there belonged to the Osbournes was apparently it was robbed by grave robbers and there was supposed to be jewellery inside there and stuff like that. So that's why we see it as it is today. Now before I finish up the video guys I just want to come over and show you a beautiful grave here. Um, of a little boy. Martin and it's covered in flowers and it's just on the Catholic side here as you can see the hedge that divides the cemetery. In loving memory of Johanna Fahey Nee Kennedy, also her grandson Martin Fahey, aged five years old, born on the 30th of May 1954. Uh, Martin Spider in brackets Fahey, age 94 years old, died the 29th of August 2021. Fondly remembered by his family. There's a beautiful photograph of Martin here, like a porcelain picture of Martin you can see beautiful little boy only five years old so rest in peace Martin right guys I'm going to finish the video up here and uh, in Killalone Cemetery here it's Catholic and President divided the cemetery and this beautiful old church behind me so if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Um, some interesting places we found here today in graves, the old crypt, stories of grave, rob grave robbers and everything like that. So until the next time on the next adventure, take care guys and God bless. Talk to you all very, very soon. Mm -hmm.